Well, you guys got another video here for you. Stop taking this risk with computers. That's what the title is of this video. So on the Toasty Bros channel, it says it's easy to build a $100 gaming PC. It's not easy. It's very, very difficult and near enough impossible. Anyway, during the video, I see them installing a, a 960 4 gigabyte card on a 170 watt power supply. Now this is really ridiculous and it can cause a fire. So I left a comment to say, do not do this people. That card requires a 400 watt power supply. They have a 170 watt PSU. Yes, it might work for a while, but the PSU can catch fire. What's more important, views or safety? So the response was, there is a difference between the GPU manufacturers, what they say and what you need. And I put, I agree but 170 watts is pushing it a bit, as you mentioned in the video, and surely recommending someone replace the power supply would have been a better, safer option. Now, these PCs can be got pretty cheap on eBay, not as cheap as $100 for the whole PC, because time you buy the graphics card and time you buy the actual SSD and time you buy the adapter cable and all that sort of stuff, you're not going to be able to do it for $100. It's pretty much a clickbait title, and it's not thinking about people's safety either by using the same power supply that's actually in that computer, which is only 170 watts. So when you go over to a power supply calculator, and I put in all of the specs for that particular system, which is for the Core i5-4570S, and also the graphics card that they used, which is the GTX 960, and also the RAM, which was 16 gigabytes. Uh, I pulled that in and put the SSD in there and everything else. They were recommending 321 watts. Now that is obviously more than 170 watts. So we are talking now of all the other components together, and you start putting all that together and adding it up, it gets above 170 watts. Now, when you go to the manufacturer's website for these graphics cards, they always recommend you purchase a power supply a bit more powerful than what you actually need, so you've got a bit of headroom. They're recommending a 400 watt power supply here. Now, are the manufacturers wrong and the Toasty Bros are right and you don't need a power supply of that power? That's just ridiculous. Of course, they're not wrong. Everyone needs to have a power supply that's capable of running a system safely. And there's recommendations on that. Look at the Hunt Key power supply that's in there, 170 watts or 174 watts to be exact. And it says here, output do not exceed 174 watts. So what can happen? Well, if you start exceeding this, it can catch fire. It can cause a major fire and it's not safe. So to stay at their $100 uh, title, they had to leave the power supply in there, which obviously means that someone's watching that video and they could end up going and replicating exactly what they do, which is where the danger lies. So yes, you can get some crashing and you can get some blue screens and it may cause a bit of an issue, but it can actually catch fire if you use it for long periods of time. The heat is going to get hot there's not a lot of airflow in those old systems because they don't have any airflow in them. There's no fans. There was no recommendation to get some airflow in there. Once that graphics card starts getting toasty, it's going to start building up some heat in there and it's going to cause some uh, heat with the power supply as well, which can then cause a fire. The second bad part is they were using this cable, which is a, a dual SATA power cable which is not good. That is a SATA 2 6-pin PCI Express cable. Even in the video, they mentioned how sketchy it is, and it is sketchy, and it shouldn't be used. So the power supply wasn't even supposed to be used with a graphics card because it didn't have the cable on it. Now, looking at the Guru 3D's website here, it actually tells you about the power consumption for a GTX 960. So you can see here, number one, system idle uh, mode equals 120 watts, system wattage with GPU in full stress mode, 236 watts, and the difference GPU load equals 116 watts, add average idle wattage, 10 watts, and then subjective obtained GPU power consumption, 123 watts. That right there tells you that that card is pulling a fair bit of power. Now that's without talking about the CPU and all of the other components that are inside there as well, which are going to be drawing power as well, which all tots up 
to be quite a, a considerable amount of power. And you can see the TDP for the CPU is 65 watts. So you top those back up together and just the CPU and the GPU alone is going to be getting up there a fair bit. And that's why when we did the calculator for the power supply at the very beginning, it said 321 watts with all of the components that I totted up together. So you can see now already you're going well above the 174 watts recommended on that power supply. And they're telling you that it's perfectly fine. So the information they're giving out is misinformation. It's not good information whatsoever. Yes, they want to try to reach their $100 threshold. But at what point? Safety overviews. You can see here a, a PC like this is going to be a pretty cheap, affordable PC for a lot of people. But the time you put a decent power supply in there, which is what you should be doing, and then obviously putting your graphics card in and your SSD and things like that, and your little adapter for your power supply, all of that adds up and it won't be $100. There's no airflow in these things, so you're going to have to some sort of cannibalize a fan in the front somehow to draw air in the front and obviously exhaust it out the back because obviously there's going to be a lot of heat build up inside here. And that's one of the biggest problems with these old systems. Now you may be able to snag one of these pretty cheap, but do look for the specifications because some of them have i3s in them. And again, the time you replace the processor in these, because obviously an i3 is not going to be good enough. And the time you buy extra RAM, some of them only come with four gigabytes of RAM. So the time you put more RAM in and then you buy an SSD, and he also put the power supply in, the adapter, and also other things as well, fans doing the front, it's going to top up to a fair bit of money. So bear that in mind. And again, if you're going to be flipping these, because the Toasty Bros are not the only channel that promote this sort of stuff, people watch these channels and they get high views, and of course, people don't realise the dangers. And if you're going to be flipping these for profit, then obviously change the power supply and make it safe for people who are buying it. That way it's not going to be causing a problem because if kids are going to be playing on these for long hours, it can cause an issue. So if the power supply blows, it's going to take the graphics card and probably other components with it or it can catch fire. So those are the key problems that I see with people promoting this sort of stuff. Buy a little adapter cable like this. They're not the best thing to do, but you can buy them and then you can change the power supply to something more sufficient. Use the recommendations, that's what they're there for, and it gives you a bit of headroom to stop the power supply from working at maximum capacity all the time, which can put a lot of load on it and cause a issue like fire. So you really don't want to be doing that. So always give yourself at least 100 wattage uh, headroom so you're not pushing the maximum out of that power supply. So 500 watt power supply is going to be pretty decent for most of the old used graphics cards that you see out there. Buy yourself a cheap SSD like these, and these systems will serve you uh, okay if you're on a really super tight budget. But just don't overspend on them. And also remember that Windows 10 end of life comes in October 2025, and these systems will not officially run Windows 11 on them. So you are going to be uh, basically buying a doorstop, which doesn't have a long life expectancy on it, unless you use Windows 10 LTSE, which will give you uh, an extended period for updates and things like that. Now, I'm not saying that you can't buy these old systems and make them a gaming system because you can. Just do it the right way and change out that power supply and make things a lot safer for yourself. If it doesn't catch fire, it's going to blow up and take some components with it, which obviously is going to be a costly thing for you. Now, you may see tons of these on the internet. No one is really buying them anymore because they are starting to show their age a fair bit. And again, if you are buying anything like this, what I'd advise you to do is at least try to get one that's an eighth generation, uh, but they are a little bit more expensive than some of these older ones right here. But they are worth buying some of the eighth generations because obviously they will have a little bit of longevity to them because you can then install Windows 11 on them in the future if you wanted to continue to use that for many years afterwards. But the PC market is pretty slow right now. No one is really buying these old systems as much as they used to. And that's because they probably know people are charging too much money for them. Now, also, if you are buying one of these, make sure you try to get one with the right specifications in it. A lot of these are being sold with i in them, four gigabytes of memory. That means you're going to have to change out the CPU, the power supply, the RAM, 
and it will all start to add up and it will make this project a not a viable project to do because it will then become too expensive. Get the item as cheap as possible with obviously the right CPU in it and you should be pretty much good to go if you are looking to buy something like this for a gaming system. Now once you start dropping graphics cards into these systems there will be micro stutters and other issues like bottlenecks that you are introducing into the system because they wasn't really designed for gaming in the first place. But just bear that in mind if you are looking to buy one of these for a gaming computer and keep the costs as low as possible to make it worthy of a project that is worth doing. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support and I'll catch you in the very next video or I'll catch you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.